I got a question in an email a while back, and I answered the question, but I didn't record it, and I figured I'd go ahead and record it. It's an interesting question, and it has to do with John thirteen eighteen and Judas Iscariot, how Judas betrayed Jesus, and the person asked, I wonder could there be another person that could have betrayed Jesus besides Judas? Or is there something that Judas could have done? Or could he have asked for help to Jesus not to do the betrayal? And how come Judas was chosen? And Satan entered into Judas, so how come Satan can enter into an apostle? Okay, so I'm going to answer the question the best way I can. So... Really, the main question, did Judas have a choice? All right, let's look at some things about Judas. The first thing about Judas is Judas is a devil. In John 6, 70, it says, Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? So Jesus chose a devil. He knew that he was a devil, and he chose him. Uh, and it doesn't say he was full of the devil. He's not possessed of the devil, but a devil. And this is before Satan enters into him, that it says he is a devil. And in John six seventy one, he spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Another way you know that he wasn't just a regular man was because when he died, he went to his own place. In Acts one twenty five, it talks about how that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas, by transgression, fell, that he might go to his own place. Judas went to his own place. He didn't go to the regular place other lost people go. The next thing, Judas is also called the son of perdition. In John 17.12, it says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So Judas is called the son of perdition. The Antichrist is also called the son of perdition. And Second Thessalonians 2, 3. And remember that in Genesis three fifteen, that the serpent has a seed. Remember that. Sometimes when you read Genesis 3.15, you forget the serpent also has a seed. And the angels in Genesis 6 kept not their first estate and fornicated with human women. So that shows us it's possible for an angel or a cherub, in Lucifer's case, to have offspring. You see, Judas was the offspring of the devil, just like Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And notice a prophecy about the one who betrays Jesus in Psalm 109. In Psalm 109, and starting in verse 6, it says, Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Now what does that remind you of? Acts one twenty where it's talking about Judas. In Acts one twenty, it says, For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. So that was talking about Judas in Acts one twenty. It says, It is written in the book of Psalms, uh, connecting you back to Psalm 109, showing Psalm 109 is about the man who betrayed Jesus, Judas Iscariot, and look what it goes on to say in Psalm 109, verse 9. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath, and let the strangers spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him, neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following let their name be blotted out. 
Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Notice that last phrase, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. So his mother did something so vile that it wouldn't be blotted out. And it was most likely the same thing that the women did back in Genesis 6. Um, most likely what you have with Judas was a similar case that happened back in Genesis 6, and that's why he is a devil. So right off the bat, you see something strange about Judas. He's a weird case. He, he's uh, not just a regular man. He is a devil. He's something completely different than me and you. But to continue answering the question, at the same time, God is just and God is a, a righteous God. And God sees through his foreknowledge what Judas will do. Way back before sin even entered into the world, God would have seen what Judas was going to do. He sees it through his foreknowledge. He knew everything Judas would do. He knew everything that me and you would do. He knew the choice that we would make about believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. He knew if you would accept him or reject him. So God sees through his foreknowledge that Judas would betray him. And remember back in Exodus, how that the Lord knew Pharaoh wouldn't let the children of Israel go before they even asked him to let them go. He said in Exodus 3.19, before Pharaoh's heart even gets hardened, it says, and I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. He, he knew before it even happened that he wouldn't let them go. You see, God sees through his foreknowledge what choice you're going to make, and he will use your choice for his plan, his honor, and his glory. Whatever choice you make, and whatever choice you make, it's still going to work out to work out for him. You see, the Lord knew Judas' choice before he would even make the choice, and the Lord was going to use whatever his choice is to carry out his plan, fulfill the scripture, and get honor and glory out of it. Could someone else have betrayed Jesus in the same way? Sure, but it turned out to be Judas. So Judas was the one uh, that was chosen to be that, to be that one of the twelve that would uh, betray Jesus. But Judas chose to do it of his own free will. He wasn't made to do it. And God used his choice. God used Judas's choice to make his power known, to, to fulfill the scripture. And he will use your choice. Even if you make the wrong choice. You see, God uh, knew that Judas would make the wrong choice. He, he could look at, say that you had a thousand possible people to do this deed of betraying Jesus that would do it perfectly. He knew what all their choices would be and he knew the one that would fulfill scripture and it was Judas. But Judas chose of his own free will. It's, it's, it's about God's foreknowledge, not about God making Judas do it. God just knows who's going to do what before they do it and who would do what in each scenario. And consider Pharaoh again. God uses the hardness of man's heart and their rejection to show his power. In Romans 9.22 it says, What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? For example, God knew Pharaoh would harden his heart and not let the people go. The Lord used Pharaoh's choice as an opportunity to bring the plagues on Egypt and to show his power. You see, he used his choice. Pharaoh could have made the right choice and let Israel go the, the first time they, he was asked. But God knew that he wouldn't, so he decided, well, I'm going to use this guy who's full of rebellion. I'm going to use him to show my wrath and to make my power known. God will use your choice. So every creature has a choice. And in Revelation 12, 4, it says, talking about the devil, 
It says, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. You see, his tail drew the third part of the stars. Anyone who rejects God and rebels is drawn away. You see, the angels, even the angels, some of them are drawn away. They've been drawn away by the devil. Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. You see, God wants you and the devil wants you. You have to choose which way to go. It's your choice. Judas chose the wrong way. It was the devil who put it in Judas's heart to betray Jesus, as it says in John 13, 2, and supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. So Judas was a devil, but he would still have he would have still had a choice. And God will use whatever choice is, whatever your choice is, to get honor and glory out of it, whether you make the right choice or a bad choice. You're not going to outsmart God and make the wrong choice and somehow hurt God and mess his plan up because whatever choice, God's got it fixed to whatever you choose, it's still going to work out to where the scriptures are fulfilled. And if God saw through his foreknowledge that Judas wouldn't have betrayed the Lord and been the one to fulfill scripture, the Lord would have seen another person through his foreknowledge who would have made the wrong choice and he would have been chosen to fulfill the scripture and betray Jesus. It's all about foreknowledge and not about God forcing anyone to make a certain decision. But Judas is the perfect man for the job. Not only is he, he a devil, but he's also, uh, God also seen through his foreknowledge that Judas would make the wrong choice. So he used him to, so the scriptures would be fulfilled. Now, the next thing, how can Satan enter into an apostle, this person asked. Well, think about this. Judas tricked the other 11 disciples for three and a half years and many other people. He was a devil, yet he was able to trick all these godly men. He had the signs of an apostle and was able to fool people with his uh, sign gifts uh, he was going around preaching and confirming the word with signs. Yet we know Satan entered into him. How did he do that? In John thirteen twenty seven, it says, And after the sop, Satan entered into him, and then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest do quickly. But you've got to remember that there can be false apostles. In 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. You see, the Antichrist and the false prophet will also be able to deceive with signs and lying wonders. Judas is the son of perdition. The Antichrist is the son of perdition. Both do miracles. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, it says, Even him, the Antichrist, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs, <coughs> and lying wonders. You see, Judas was a false apostle. And uh, Satan entered into him. He's not a true apostle. And even think about this. Uh, the devil got in Peter. What did the Lord say to Peter? He said, get thee behind me, Satan. So it is, it is possible for Satan to enter an apostle, especially a false apostle. And you had to consider back then uh, that they weren't sealed until the day of redemption. And uh, Satan could have entered into any of them. But Judas was a false apostle. And he was not a, a true apostle. Uh, Man of God. He was not a true apostle at all. So that's how that happened. But consider also how he was able to trick the 11 disciples for those years there. And they didn't even know it. Imagine how deceptive the Antichrist is going to be to be able to trick godly people 
and them not even know that he's the the man of sin. And it makes you wonder about people. Are they really who they say they are, or are they tricking you? Are you really who you say you are, or are you tricking people? Have you really believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you just doing all this because your family does it? Have you really believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you just doing this for show to make yourself look good? You need to make the choice because every creature has a choice. You can either choose God or you can choose the devil. And uh, the, the devil wants you on his side. God wants you in the body of Christ. And all you got to do to be saved is to come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and believe on him. And you know what Jesus did for you? He died on the cross for your sins. He shed his blood on the cross. Every sin you ever committed, past, present, and future, was poured on the Lord Jesus Christ. He became that sin for you on the cross and paid the payment for your sin. And all you have to do to be saved is come to Jesus as the guilty sinner that you are, realizing he died on the cross for your sins, shedding his blood, paying the payment for your sins, was buried and resurrected. You put your trust in that to be your payment for sin, then you're saved. Don't trust in your own goodness. You don't have any goodness. Don't trust in your own self-righteousness. Your righteousness is no good. Your righteousness is filthy rags. Romans 6.23 says, For all have Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 10.13, though, says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You've sinned, but who does Jesus save? Sinners. You're not too bad to be saved. He died for all sins. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Every sin ever committed, Jesus became that. He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So just come to Jesus the best way you know how, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ.